All right, on to the neutrals. So starting out, we have the Elwyn Boar. Uh, one mana, one, one beast, death rattle. If you had seven Elwyn Boars die this game, equip a 15-3 Sword of a Thousand Truths, which is a 15-3 weapon. After your hero attacks, destroy your opponent's mana crystals. Uh, definitely a meme card. There's a lot of, like, light support for this in the set, but I don't think I saw anything that makes me think, oh, this is actually a real deck. But, uh, you know, maybe Priest or Hunter can complete this sometimes. I guess uh, Devouring Swarm, the Hunter card that uh, you make your minions attack, and if they die, they replace themselves in your hand. That's, like, probably the best support this got. But I still think this is mostly a meme card along the lines of Mogu Cultist, things like that. Uh, Peasant. One mana, two, one. At the start of your turn, draw a card. This was one of the first cards we saw. I actually forgot about it. Uh, yeah, this card's just really good, though, right? One mana, two, one. At the start of your turn, draw a card. I mean, sometimes it's going to die before it draws a card, but sometimes it's not. Sometimes it's not going to die before it draws a card. And sometimes it's not even going to die before it draws two cards. Uh, yeah, I just think it's a really threatening one drop. Has some particular synergy in, like, Questline Paladin. But you might also just play it in Face Hunter. Might also just play it in Zoo. Uh, maybe you play it in, like, Garot Rogue. Maybe you play it even in, like, Overload Shaman or something. A lot of decks are in the market for a powerful one drop. And this is a powerful one drop. I guess it works with a Demon Hunter quest line as well, but I have a low opinion of that card. Stockade's Guard. One mana, one three with Battle Cry. Give a friendly minion Taunt. So it's like Sun Fury Protector, but scaled down a bit. And a better stat line overall. It's a Dire Mole if you want to just play it on turn one. Uh, seems like a pretty solid card. I don't know if it's going to be high impact enough to really see play anywhere, but it's a good one drop for Quest Paladin. Maybe it's good in Handlock to give your Mountain Giants Taunt. Um, I know for sure I will be giving a Blood Herald Taunt with this card at some point. Probably not the meta pick, but uh, seems fun. I don't really know if there's anything else too flashy you can do with this. But it's just a solid card to always consider playing. Wouldn't be too surprised if it doesn't end up seeing play. I think something like Handlock would probably rather play Armor Vendor or even um, even Spirit Jailer, but it's a solid card. Auctioneer Jackson, 2 minute 2 3, whenever you trade, discover a card from your deck to draw instead. Uh, let's see, how many tradable cards did they actually end up printing? 17 tradable cards. Looks like one for each class except warrior got two good job warrior and then another oh 16 because auctioneer jackson came up so yeah one for each class an extra one for warrior and then five neutrals yeah i think it's probably going to be hard to build a deck that plays enough tradable cards for me to care about this tracking is a good card but it's not a significant enough upgrade over draw a card that i care to play this card it's okay but i don't think there's enough support Deep Run Engineer, 2 mana 1 2 with Battle Cry. Discover a mech, it costs 1 less. Uh, actually, I don't know what mechs are in standard. There's 17 mechs in standard. Uh, there are, it looks like, 8 neutrals. So any class you play this in, you're not very likely to hit something in particular. You got some stinkers like Clockwork Giant, Replicatatron, even Spider Tank, which, wow, Spider Tank is in the core zone? Did not know that. Uh, yeah, I mean, I just don't really see this being, like, I don't see this consistently hitting anything useful. I guess it's at its best in Warrior, because they have five class mechs. But even if you're hitting Scrap Golem, Remote Controlled Golem, yeah, I just don't really see this being good enough to see play. Encumbered Pack Mule, 2 mana, 2, 3 beast with taunt. When you draw this, add a copy of it to your hand. So my initial impression of this card was not... I, I didn't have a very high opinion of it. But then I saw people saying this is just Serenite Chain Gang, and I was like, huh, I guess this is just Serenite Chain Gang, right? Except you can play it as a 2 mana, 2, 3, or as 
four mana for the full chain gang for two, two, three taunts. And uh, when you look at it like that, it seems like a pretty good card. It also has some like hand buff or some, uh, I guess, like deck buff synergies with, I don't know, invigorating sermon or something. I don't know if that's really a thing. I mean, I guess it does have hand buff synergies as well because they are both in your hand to be buffed. So like maybe that's cool. Uh, it has some hand lock synergies. Powers up your mountain giants because you draw out its two cards in your hand. Maybe a bit clunky for that. I don't know. I think it's just like a solid neutral taunt minion. I don't really know necessarily what deck plays this card. But I think there's a good chance that there's like some random deck that wants to play Serenite Chang Yang. I don't think it's insane though. Florist. 2 mana 2 3. At the end of your turn, reduce the cost of a nature spell in your hand by one. So if I'm not mistaken, this is just Shaman and Druid, right? That have nature spells. Oh, I guess the rogue poisons are also nature spells, but yeah, I can't imagine that being a thing. Uh, I mean, yeah, reducing the cost of a card in your hand is like nice, but is it really worth playing a two minute two three? I can't imagine that like token druid wants to play this. I don't think an overgrowth druid wants to play this. Uh, shaman, they'd rather be playing their elemental synergies or their overload synergies. I think this card is probably just a bit low impact to really see much play. Mailbox Dancer, 2 minute 3 2, Battle Cry, add a coin to your hand, Death Rattle, give your opponent one. Yeah, I mean, it's just mostly a symmetrical effect. Uh, Licensed Adventurer wasn't even that good of a card, and it was pretty similar. I just don't really see where I'd want to play this card, but maybe some combo that, like, specifically needs a coin to be viable. I don't like it too much, though. Pandaren Importer, 2 mana 1 3 with Battle Cry, discover a spell that didn't start in your deck. Well, the thing about spells that aren't in your deck is they tend to suck, because if they were good, they'd be in your deck. So a little bit underwhelming. Um, I think generally I'd probably rather just play Wandmaker than this card. You can also scale up and play uh, Venomous Scorpid instead. It seems fine, but I think they're currently better options for value generation, even in the neutral slot. Uh, SI7 Skulker. I actually forgot that there was a neutral SI7 card when we were talking about the SI7 stuff in Rogue earlier. Uh, two mana, two, two with stealth, battle cry, the next card you draw costs one less. I mean, it's fine. Two mana, two, two is kind of garbage, but getting a free mana is okay. Kind of depends on what you hit though. It's pretty random. I don't know. I mean, maybe like in a rogue deck that plays, uh, what is the 3-3 three, three that draws when you have stealth? Greyheart Sage. Maybe in a Greyheart Sage deck. This could be okay. I'm not really sure where else I'd want to play this. I think a 2-mana two 2-2 two, two looks kind of sad. I think this is another in a long line of mediocre SI7 cards. It's definitely better than uh, a couple of the class ones Rogue got, though. Stockade's Prisoner, 2 mana 5 4 starts dormant. After you play 3 cards, this awakens. Well, it's kind of similar to Imprisoned Felmaw, which is one of Hunter's best cards. But this does take some effort. There's probably a pretty decent chance that this takes more than 2 turns to wake up if you play it in the early game. But there's also a chance it wakes up after 1 turn. But even if it wakes up after one turn, that's like breaking even with Felmaw, since the Felmaw gets to attack the turn it wakes up anyway. Uh, definitely compares unfavorably to Felmaw. But it is a 2-mana 5-4. I guess maybe like... Maybe a Shaman or a Druid with like Lightning Bloom could activate this pretty easily. Maybe just a Rogue with some cheap cards could activate this pretty easily. Maybe even Hunter can activate this easily. They got the new zero mana spell, and they just generally play a lot of, like, cheap stuff for a uh, car pack runner. I don't know. This card is definitely potentially playable, but I just... I currently do not see the home for it. it seems like it requires maybe a little bit too much effort. Uh, could be good in Paladin that plays a million one-drops. You just wake it up on turn three very consistently. 
slows down your quest though, so probably not. I don't know. Okay card, but not an immediately not a home that immediately comes to mind. Enthusiastic Banker. Three mana two three at the end of your turn, store a card from your deck. Death rattle, add the stored cards to your hand. So I guess this means that it's just like removed from your deck. And then with this dies it, they go to your hand. I guess if this gets like sapped or something, then they just disappear, which is kind of sad, but I don't think there's really too many sap effects in standard. Um, it does seem like most of the time this is going to die after one turn, so it's going to effectively be three mana, two, three, draw a card, which is not insane. Loot Hoarder is in standard. But uh, there is some upside to this card. It does seem like it almost always does get one card. But then it can potentially hit two or three. That's like pretty nice. It is kind of a must remove threat on turn three or else it's going to draw a lot of cards. Seems like a solid neutral card draw option. It does seem like most classes maybe just have better card draw though. But maybe some class is lacking and wants to play this card. Entrapped Sorceress, 3 mana 3 4, battle cry, if you control a quest, discover a spell. A uh, very powerful card, I think if you're playing quests you probably play this, unless you're playing a quest that really wants to like curve out, but like this is pretty good with the uh, the priest quest, maybe not so much the paladin quest. Uh, seems very solid, but even in quest decks maybe this compares unfavorably to Venomous Scorpid, since that does have poisonous. And, uh, even in quest decks, once you finish your quest, then, like, suddenly this doesn't do anything anymore. But it seems fine. There are ten quest lines. This is probably good enough in one of the decks. Uh, Flightmaster Dungar. We've already played with this card. I don't see any reason that it would get worse going forward, so... Playable now, playable tomorrow. Impatient Shopkeep. Three mana, three, three with tradable and rush. I think when I originally reviewed this card, I said it would be like the litmus test to see how strong the tradable keyword is. Still not totally sure how I feel about it. I think it could see play, but it's definitely not insane. I don't think it has much of a chance in something like Elemental Shaman or, uh, I don't know, just like any deck that's really synergy heavy. But I could see some random control deck playing this. Some like Control Shaman I throw together or, uh... Maybe even Control Warrior. I don't know. I still don't really know how to feel about this, but it definitely could see play. Certainly not an auto-include. Nobleman. 3 mana 2, 3, battle cry. Create a golden copy of a random card in your hand. So, uh, I mean, the golden copy part doesn't do anything, right? It's just a kind of a gimmick like Zola the Gorgon. But, uh, yeah, just battle cry. Create a copy of a card in your hand. Cards in your hand do tend to be pretty good since you put them in your deck, usually. So how is 3 mana 2, 3 draw a card? I mean, we did see 3 mana 2, 3 draw a card earlier, and I said it was like pretty reasonable. That had more upside, but this has more combo potential. Um, I guess you can copy Elwyn Boar. I don't know if there's anything else that you're like super interested in copying with this. But I mean, just take it game by game if you're playing some sort of control deck that doesn't tend to have a huge hand, then, you know, sometimes you copy a board clear, sometimes you copy a heal. But it is hard to consistently hit what you want with this card, because I think most decks tend to have a decent number of cards in their hand. Um, I don't think this card is, like, insane, but I wouldn't be shocked if it popped up every now and then. Northshire Farmer, 3 mana 3-3 three, three with Battle Cry. Choose a friendly beast, shuffle three, three, three copies into your deck. Here's the Elwyn Boar synergy we've been waiting for, right? Um, yeah, I mean, that's probably what this card will be used for. I can't really imagine what other beast we would want to be shuffling with this. Kind of weird to me that this is a neutral card. Because I can't really imagine a class other than Hunter wanting to play this. I guess maybe Druid. Play this on your Vibrant Squirrel, and then you have a lot of squirrels in your deck. Oh, this could be really good with Umbral Owl, maybe? That is a pretty insane... Oh, it makes it a 3-3, though. It's not like it gives it plus 3, plus 3. 
Maybe you shuffle some Rat Kings into your deck. That could actually be a thing since the Rat King sticks around on the board so long. Probably don't really want to shuffle Crash since it only has three health. It's hard to get the effect out of it. I'm good with Encumbered Pack Mule, maybe. The uh, Chain Gang card. Oh, shuffle some Moon Fangs into the deck. I think there are probably better ways to copy Moon Fangs, though. Um, yeah, maybe you could just play this in a deck that plays, like, two Venomous Scorpid and a couple Umbral Owls. I don't know, you're probably just playing this in Hunter with Rat King and nowhere else. And maybe not even there. Package Runner, three mana, five, six. Can only attack if you have at least eight cards in hand. Well, Handlock consistently has eight cards in hand, so seems good there. And I think there are probably other classes that consistently have big hands. You have like Priest with Sethic Veilweaver, where this would very consistently just be a 3-mana 5-6. Um, I'm not sure where else this would see play. Rogue does tend to have a pretty big hand pretty often. Uh, seems good in Handlock at least. Maybe sees play somewhere else. Rustrot Viper, 3 mana 3 4 with tradable and battle cry destroy your opponent's weapon. So Acidic Swamp Ooze that you can trade away if your opponent doesn't have a weapon seems very, very strong to me. Uh, they did print a lot of weapons in this set. I think every class got a weapon. I don't know how many of them are really worth breaking though. I guess there's the Warlock one, the Ruined Mithril Rod, that's definitely worth breaking. And then you still have, like, uh, the rogue weapons from previous sets that deal a lot of damage. You have, like, the uh, secret weapon from Paladin. I mean, if there are weapons in the meta, you play this card. And it's less risky than Ooze because you can just trade it away. Traveling Merchant. 3 mana 2 3 with tradable. Battle cry gain plus 1 plus 1 for each other friendly minion you control. So if you don't have a board, you just trade it away. If you do have a board, you make a pretty good sized minion. Uh, you probably only need like two minions for this to be okay. Any more than that, and it starts to look really good. Maybe you play this in Rat King Hunter. Maybe you play this just in like Death Rattle Demon Hunter. That deck tends to have a lot of minions in play. Um, you could play it in Token Druid. But all of those classes, all of those decks seem to be pretty synergy based. I don't know if they really have the room to just play like a stat stick like this, but it is a pretty good stat stick. Maybe a little bit underwhelming though. Uh, Two-Faced Investor, 3-2-4 at the end of your turn, either reduce the cost of a card in your hand by one or increase the cost of a card in your hand by one. Uh, it's an understated three drop with an unreliable effect. It's just not good. Cheesemonger, 4 mana 3 6 whenever your opponent casts a spell, add a random spell with the same cost to your hand. Um, so yeah, I mean, we've seen that Ogremancer is a pretty good card. That is a card that punishes the opponent for playing spells, right? This does a similar thing. I think Ogremancer might just be better, though. It is a little bit more expensive, but it gives you tempo instead of value. And the thing about Cheesemonger is it can also just give you garbage that's not really worth playing. And uh, w one of the things about Ogremancer is, like, it's even kind of good against aggro, right? Because the taunts are so annoying to deal with. And the taunts make the Ogremancer itself hard to kill. The Cheesemonger doesn't really do that to the same extent. But, I mean, it is a powerful card. If there are a lot of spells in the meta, the Cheesemonger definitely could end up seeing play, for sure. Guild Trader, 4 mana 3 4 with tradable and spell damage plus 2. Uh, this card seems quite good to me. As I've said, I have a very high opinion of the tradable keyword, and then this is a, uh, a 4 mana spell damage plus 2 thing. I think there are a lot of classes that can abuse spell damage plus 2. So yeah, like Mage, Rogue, Shaman, all of those classes are potentially pretty interested in spell damage. I could definitely see this card sticking somewhere. I don't know off the top of my head the exact deck it goes in, but spell damage plus two on a minion is pretty scary and tradable is insane. Uh, four mana, three, four, tradable. Battle cry, silence a minion. Yeah, this card's just insane. I mean, people played Spellbreaker 
And this is just Spellbreaker, but you can trade it away when it's not relevant. I mean, maybe the meta just doesn't have any silence targets, but I don't see why Death Rattle Demon Hunter would go anywhere. Even against, like, Token Druid or something, a silence is still relevant sometimes. It's just hard to imagine this card not seeing some amount of play. I mean, maybe decks are just too synergy based. You don't have room for this card, but it's it's a very strong card compared to a card that has seen a lot of play in the past. Spice Bread Baker, 4 minute 3 3, Battle Cry, Restore Health to Your Hero, equal to your hand size. Uh, Warlock at least plays this card. Any other class that's interested in healing might play this card, like maybe Demon Hunter plays it or something. But for sure. Warlock is going to play this card, whether they're Handlock or the quest line or whatever. So yeah, card is for sure playable. It's just a lot of healing on a 4 mana minion. Stubborn Suspect. 4 mana 3-3 three, three with Death Rattle, summon a random 3 cost minion. So basically piloted Shredder, but summon a 3 cost instead of a 2 cost. Uh, we've seen from Serpent Shrine Portal that random 3 cost minions tend to be pretty good. Sometimes you get Mukla, sometimes you get the 3-7. Seems fine. I don't know what deck you play this in. Maybe Death Rattle Demon Hunter. Uh, that deck does have maybe like too many good Death Rattles now. They also got the Persistent Peddler, which competes very directly with this. But maybe both of those are better than the 3-3 three, three that summons 1-1s. One Could see play in that deck. Battleground Battlemaster. 5 mana 5-5 five, five. adjacent minions have Wind Fury. Uh, this card is potentially a lot of damage. I mean, if you consistently have like two three power minions going into turn five, this is just five mana five five, deal six damage to the enemy hero. That's a lot. Uh, it can also let your minion take a trade and then go face. You can let your minion go face, take a trade, and then another minion slides over, and that minion can go face twice or something like that. It's just potentially a lot of damage out of this card. I don't know what deck it goes in, because zoo decks don't really exist much right now. But maybe you just slap this in like Death Rattle Demon Hunter, they always seem to have a board. Maybe it's good in Quest Paladin, because they're always going to have a couple of 3-3s three sitting around. Maybe it's just more damage for Shaman, I don't really know. But uh, it's potentially a lot of damage, I wouldn't be surprised if it saw play somewhere. Lion's Guard, 5 mana 4, 6, with Battle Cry, if you have 15 or less health, gain plus 2, plus 4, and Taunt. So 5 mana 4, 6 is not that bad, but when it's upgraded, it's a 5 mana 6, 10 with Taunt. That is a big minion. That is hard for aggro to get through, or it would be if they didn't reprint Spellbreaker with Tradable. But uh, yeah, I mean, it seems like a pretty solid card. I don't really know what deck plays this, maybe Handlock. But Warlock has so many good things going for it at the moment. I don't even know if they have room for this card. Uh, having 15 or less health, I mean, Warlock would be the class to do that in, but certainly other classes get smacked around a bit by aggro. Seems like a very fine card. Depends, of course, on how aggressive the meta is, because if you're just losing every game to, like, a uh, questline priest or the Warlock questline, then you're probably not really going to have an opportunity to play this buffed. But yeah, it's pretty good against Face Hunter. Stormwind Guard, 5 mana 4, 5 with Taunt, Battlecry, Adjacent Minions, give Adjacent Minions plus 1, plus 1. I mean, it's fine, but it's just hard to imagine a deck where this would see play. It's, uh, it's okay. I, I don't think. Like, even in Zoo, you just play the bartender or whatever it's called i don't think this is going to see much play just a little bit too low impact i think i'd rather just play wriggling horror get the same effect for three less mana and it's like weird to buff your minions and get a taunt like if you have the board why do you need a taunt minion weird card uh city architect six mana four four battle cry summon two zero five castle walls with taunt i mean that's 10 healing for six mana kind of it doesn't block spells that go face or hunter hero power or whatever. But that's a lot of defense for 6 mana. Kind of reminiscent of Giggling Inventor. Not quite. But it might be playable if most of the decks in the meta are trying to attack your face. Maybe good against like Pirate Warrior or something. Seems playable. 
Uh, Cornelius Rome, we've seen this card. It's insane. Six mana, four, five. At the start and end of each player's turn, draw a card. So you play it. At the end of your turn, you draw a card. And at the start of your opponent's turn, you draw a card. If they don't kill it, you draw four more cards. It's just a lot of card draw on a neutral minion. Probably going to go in a lot of decks. Uh, Lady Prestor, six mana, six, seven, battle cry. Transform minions in your deck into dragon, into random dragons. They keep their original stats and cost. So if you have a wisp in your deck, it can be turned into a zero mana, one, one, uh, Alexstrasza. That's pretty good damage. Most of the dragons in standard at the moment are like pretty big and scary, right? So it seems like the effect on this is pretty impactful. You can hit like Skeletal Dragon. Even your low roll is like Brightwing, which is pretty good. Uh, Dragon Moss Skystalker. Onyx Mage Scribe. All the big nine mana dragons. Seems like a pretty reasonable effect on this card. But part of the reason some of those dragons are good is because of their stat lines. So the fact that this... Uh, keeps the stat lines of your original minions is a little weird. Like if you play this with uh, like the quest paladin with all your one drops maybe, and then you get uh, like Anixia, and your deck can already kind of fill the board and then you have like a one, two Anixia or something. Not really that much of a threat, but it's still like pretty powerful. And then sometimes you get like Plague Proto Drake, which is insane. Uh, maybe this is just like a finisher for aggro, or maybe it's like a value thing for control matchups somehow like you build your deck to beat aggro and then maybe this can help you win in the control mirrors i don't really know that a card like this is going to be that impactful in control mirrors going forward just because there's so much inevitability with quest line stuff but it is definitely an effect to keep an eye on i would say moarg forge fiend eight mana eight eight demon with taunt and death rattle gain eight armor uh, there was Deranged Doctor, which was an 8-mana 8-8 eight, eight death rattle heal for 8. And this is better than that in, like, three separate ways. Armor is better than health because you can go over 30. This has Taunt, so it's just... That's just an extra keyword. And it's also a demon. Being a demon means that it's good in, like, big demon demon hunter. But I think more generally, this card is just good with Nazoth, right? There aren't really neutral demons, or there just aren't really demons you want to play with Nazoth in general, and this is a really good one. Um, yeah, I mean, it's pretty solid there. It is, like, a little bit expensive. Sometimes it just gets spellbreakered, which is sad. A lot of games are over by this point. But it's, it's definitely, like, a meta call. There will be metas where this card is good enough to see play. Uh, Varian, King of Stormwind. 8 mana 7 7 battle cry, draw a rush minion to gain rush, repeat for taunt and divine shield. I've talked about this card quite a bit already. I don't think there's any reason that my opinion on it would have changed. Paladin gets did get some new divine shield stuff, which maybe makes this a little bit better, particularly High Lord Ford Dragon. But it was already good in Paladin. Uh, new rush minions. There were already plenty of rush minions. This looks better in Shaman now because of the Canal Slogger, I guess. Maybe uh, Impatient Shopkeep is played because of this card or something. I guess the Encumbered Pack Mule is a good taunt minion to enable this that a lot of decks would play. But yeah, just seems like a solid card. It can go in all 10 classes. I'm sure one of them will abuse this card properly. And then I believe the Goldshire Knoll is our final card of the expansion. Uh, 10 mana 5-4 with Rush costs one less for each other card in your hand. Uh, so yeah, you this is another handlock card. If you have a full hand, this is, what, 1 mana 5-4 Rush, that's really good. Even if this is like a 3 mana 5-4 Rush, that's pretty solid. Good Warlock card for sure. Warlock has a lot of good stuff, so maybe this doesn't quite make the cut. But there's some chance this could be played in Priest. Um, probably some other classes, there's like an outside chance of the Sing play. Oh, this is potentially good to Evolve Shaman, but I don't think that deck tends to have a big hand very often. 
Uh, maybe it's good in Rogue. They do tend to have pretty big hands. But uh, yeah, just a solid card all around. And it for sure should see some play in Warlock. <laughs> 